you are about to experience, Jackson Snyder presents. Direct from the Vero Essen Yahad, a Hebrew Nation radio original program. JSP is a variety show seeking out Jewish and Christian origins, religion, theology and history, and doing so in a fashion that is both educational and entertaining. Welcome to Jackson Snyder Presents. Article, the Shamanic Essenes, Keepers of the Dead Sea Scrolls and Their Secrets. 19th of June, 2020. The Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. has revealed that some of its most precious artifacts are forgery. Five papyri fragments from the Dead Sea Scrolls are now believed to be fake and modern forgery. Then they're not five fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls. This is raising questions not only about the museum's policy, but also demonstrates the sophistication of modern forgers of antiquity. The museum is new and was only opened in 2017, and the owner, billionaire Steve Green, probably not the singer, an evangelical, spent many millions of dollars on the biblical artifacts and texts that are in that museum. The most valuable of them all were those five fragments from the scroll. This is because the vast majority of the texts found in the West Bank or on display in Yerushalayim. The scrolls were purchased by the museum with the aid of the founder, well, his company's Hobby Lobby, as I mentioned before, and somebody made a killing because those fake fragments are estimated to have cost several million dollars and were obtained from a private collector. Now, of course, it's no longer legal to purchase historical artifacts under UNESCO convention. However, there is a thriving black market for such. Even at the time of the purchase, many of the experts doubted the authenticity of these scrolls because of the fragments' scribal techniques. So the museum sent some fragments of the scrolls away to be dated, and they sent them to a world renowned institution that does carbon dating using 3D mic three using 3D my 3D microscopy micro microscopy 3D micros 3D microscopy and conducted material analysis to date the fragments and what they tested were the papyrus and the ink and the way it came out that these fragments show characteristics inconsistent with ancient origin in other words the scrolls couldn't come from the period when the Dead Sea Scrolls were written. One news organization reports that this discovery of the forgeries could be the most could be forger could be part of the most significant sham in biblical archaeology since the Gospel of Jesus Wife scandal in 2012. The Museum of the Bible issued a statement that the tests raised serious questions about the authenticity of the scrolls, and the scrolls have been removed from display. The curator of the museum is quoted by the Guardian as stating that, quote, we had hoped the testing would render different results. Well, I guess so. The items were removed because the museum respects and upholds the highest ethical standard. The Washington, D.C. Museum still has at least two fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls that may be forgeries, but that hasn't been conclusively proven that they are. Of course, these aren't the first fake Dead Sea Scrolls to foil the experts. In 2002, you might remember, 70 Dead Sea Scroll fragments appeared on the market with 90% of those being fake, says the professor of biblical studies at the University of Agder. <laughs> the Green family bought theirs between 2009 and 2014, along with many other artifacts in their collection of 40,000. I'd like to know if anybody's been to that museum. I've heard tell of it that they have some wonderful things there. And here's something I've been wanting to look at for some time, and that is the finding of the 12th Dead Sea Scroll Cave. A team of archaeologists from Hebrew University were exploring a cave near the Dead Sea and claimed that the cave once hosted Dead Sea Scrolls from the Second Temple period. Unluckily, the ancient parchments are missing, possibly looted by Bedouins during the 20th century, but their discovery is still seen as an important find related to the famous Dead Sea Scroll. I wonder how they knew there were scrolls in there if there weren't any. Until recently, it's thought that only 11 caves contain scrolls. After the discovery of this cave, however, many scholars already suggest that it should be numbered as Cave 12, as happened with Cave 8, 
in which scroll jars but no scrolls were found, this cave will receive the designation Q12, indicating that no scrolls were found inside the cave. Huh. The fascinating discovery was made by Dr. Oren Gutfield and Ahiad Ovadia from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem's Institute of Archaeology, with the contributions of Dr. Randall Price and students from Liberty University in Virginia. The researchers became the first in over six decades to discover new scroll caves and to accurately excavate it. And Dr. Oren Gutfield has this to say to the Times of Israel, This exciting excavation is the closest we've come to discovering new Dead Sea Scrolls in 60 years. Until now, it was accepted that Dead Sea Scrolls were found in 11 caves only, but now there is no doubt that this is the 12th cave, although at the end of the day no scroll was found, and instead we only found a piece of parchment rolled up in a jug that was being processed for writing. The findings indicate beyond any doubt that the cave contains scrolls that were stolen. The finds from the excavation don't include only storage jars, but also fragments of scroll wrapping, a string that tied the scrolls, and a piece of worked leather that was part of a scroll. The discovery of pottery and several flint blades, arrowheads, and a decorated stamp seal made of carnelian, a semi-precious stone, also indicates that this cave was used in the Chalcolithic and the Neolithic period. Interestingly, pickaxes from the 1940s, a smoking gun from the Bedouin plunderers who dug in the cave, were also found along with the ancient remains. Dr. Gutfield also concludes that during the late 16th century, American Indians inhabited the cave. Fragments of a totem pole were found, and some Indian corn, and the remnants of a Cleveland Indian jersey. No wonder he was so happy. Well, they found two jars of dill pickle in there, too. Well, so be it. My only comment on all this is, first of all, I think the sacred mushroom theory is ridiculous. And I also think that if you want to use mushrooms to see God, well, you will see spirits, but they won't be spirits of God. As for me, I've got enough demons to deal with. I don't need some more after taking some silly psilocybin. And as far as finding phalluses in caves and being so happy to find the 14th piece of the phallus, what could be more ridiculous than that, really? Oh, Dr. Gutman, you are so ridiculous. Yes! been listening to Shroomkov, hosting the program Jackson Snyder Present, sponsored by the Vero Essien Yahad and Hebrew Nation Radio. Toda Rava, and keep your Elohim on until we get together again. Shalom, shalom. Hopefully tomorrow I'll have my rabbit. (laughs) 